Welcome to Young Tuition. Let's continue discussing basic issues in atmospherical physics in relation to weather and climate change. Today, I'm going to discuss probably the first satellite observation of the spectral radiance of the Earth, often called as、uh, OLR, outgoing long wave radiation. In fact, I didn't know this observation until recently. Why? It would appear this satellite observation has been sidelined for over sixty years because it didn't provide any evidence for CO two based greenhouse effect, which is merely a hypothesis. So, are you ready? I mean, subscribe, like, share, and make a comment. Okay, thank you very much. Let's go and have fun. Last time, I introduced an observation by a NASA scientist, Dr. Hanlio, on the ground, published in 1968. The infrared source was either the Moon or the Venus. Do you remember the range of his observation was limited by the atmospheric window due to strong water vapor absorption in the atmosphere. Notice the infrared spectra was displayed in transmission mode, in which no transmitted infrared rays emitted by the Moon or the Venus could be seen outside the atmospheric window. To compare Hanlio's result with other instrumental observations, I will flip the spectra upside down, like so. In this way. The bottom horizontal line represents the zero transmission. It is clear that no atmospheric radiation was observed. Why? Simple. Otherwise, the transmission should be non-zero outside the so-called atmospheric window between eight and thirteen micron in wavelength. For example. The ozone signal around、uh, 1,050 per centimeter is absorptive, meaning ozone in the stratosphere only absorbs, not emits, and hence merely attenuates the downward infrared rays. Remember, this is an important reference. How about the CO2 band centered at 15 micron in wavelength or 667 wave number per centimeter, completely invisible or not detectable on the ground? If this judgment were untrue, then why didn't Dr. Hanlio report it as early as 1968, one year before Nimbus 3 was launched? Now it's high time to show the earliest reported satellite observation called spectral radiance of the Earth, also called OLR. As you can see immediately, the observation range was remarkably similar to that reported by Dr. Hanlio six years later. It could be argued that the observed OLR was dominated by the transmitted. And a bit of emitted infrared rays inside and near the atmospheric window, as shown in this diagram. Notice that the infrared detector was in space towards the ground, called the nodal direction, while Hanlio's observation was on the ground towards space, called the zenith direction. Who did this satellite observation? You may ask. They are Louis Bloch and Alex Zinkold. Interestingly enough, Bloch was in the Air Force lab, while Zinkold was with the Bloch Engineering, a private company who built the Fourier transform infrared spectrometer on board for NASA. Could this Bloch be a family member of the Bloch whose company built his、uh, portable Fourier transform infrared interferometer for NASA? Compared with the iris spectrometer used for Nimbus, 
which I will discuss in detail in the future. The instrumental uncertainties were relatively high, and the spectral resolution were relatively poor, as openly admitted by the two authors in their paper. Nevertheless, their pioneering work in exploring atmospherical infrared properties should not be underestimated and sidelined by climate researchers. Here are the reasons why. First, this early satellite observation of OLR provided the first direct experimental evidence for the detectable spectral radiance of the Earth from the top of the atmosphere. Although the instrumental range was confined to 1.9 to 15 micron in wavelength. In order to compare with Dr. Hanel's observation on the ground, I have digitally transformed the reported infrared spectra by Block and Zankro in 1962 into his wave number dependence, together with the theoretically predicted infrared spectra as is shown in this diagram. Second, the absorption by the ozone above the troposphere was evident. Although the spectral resolution was poor compared with the theoretically calculated ozone absorption peak. Third, it was directly observed that the spectral radiance of the Earth decreases dramatically to almost zero when wave numbers is less than 700 and larger than 1200 per centimeter. This implies the Earth doesn't radiate much as it has been assumed. I will talk about this issue in the near future. This becomes understandable somehow if we turn on the infrared absorption spectra of water vapor first observed by Robbins and Ashikanus. It could be argued that water vapor near the surface can effectively cool the heated surface during the daytime, together with nitrogen and oxygen molecules outside the atmospherical window. The observed spectral profile from the satellite is very similar to what Dr. Hanley observed on the ground. If the two spectra were superimposed as shown in this diagram. Of course, some noticeable difference between the two infrared spectra can be seen due to the different spectral resolution used. In essence, no CO2 signal were observed which was consistent with the calculated spectral radiance. I think that is the reason why this early satellite observation of OLR has been sidelined for over 60 years in climate research, dominated by greenhouse effect hypothesis. I hope you could understand this. In order to detect any infrared absorption by a particular gas in the atmosphere, the gas, say CO2 at 50 micron, must be excited in the first place. In short, the absorption can only be worked out from the observed transmission of any infrared source. Remember also, whenever the transmitted infrared is zero, which could mean either the incident infrared ray has been completely attenuated or there is no infrared source at all. In both cases, no absorption could happen. Next year, I will discuss the most influential but fabricated spectra of the upward radiance of the Earth, or ORR, over the past half century. Before that, more relevant background will be discussed. Please stay tuned and support this channel. Thank you for watching, making comments, and donation. See you next time.